Thank you, everyone, for coming out this afternoon here in Barcelona. My name is Mark McCurry. I'm the head of platform at Shrapnel. And today, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what we built, um, what we needed to go build, and what we found it took to build a AAA game on uh, blockchain technology, Web3, uh, and specifically using Avalanche subnets. So a little bit about me. Um, I was at Microsoft for 18 years. And I launched their blockchain products there, so large-scale services for Azure Blockchain Tokens and uh, Azure Blockchain Service and all the rest, uh, developer tools, then was a consensus for a couple years. The joke I like to tell people is at Microsoft, the lawyers told me, no, no, no. At consensus, I worked for Joe Lubin, who said, go, go, go. So we got to learn a lot over the past before I got to Shrapnel, but really believe that gaming is going to drive sort of the next uh, group of folks into, uh, into Web3. So let me tell you about the world of Shrapnel. So the world of Shrapnel, if you haven't seen it at Consensus, we've just started doing some playtests with folks. Um, it's a rich world. And in that world, we have a number of maps. Those maps are made of prefabs. So lots of different items. Each of these are going to be NFTs. Um, we talk about skins and cosmetics and things like that. In some games, you may talk about uh, maybe having a skin for a character or a skin for a gun, not in Shrapnel. Right? So the folks who built Shrapnel have worked on Bioshock, Halo, Call of Duty, Ghost of Tsushima, some of your favorite games, and they dial it to 11, and my job is to say yes to these folks, and it's just a ton of fun. So when we talk about uh, things for your character, you could have all of these can be NFTs. They can be mixed and matched together. You can lock them. You can pull them apart, do really interesting things as well. And of course, that's going to translate over to your weapons as well, right? And so a weapon can be comprised of n number of different parts. They can be brought together. They can be taken apart. Um, but really, it's all about composability uh, and having a great experience. Now, in addition to that, we're all about not just players, but creators. And so for creators, we want to have a great experience. We have a design tool. Uh, last week, we started uh, releasing something called Insignia, which allows people to create stickers and skins. Um, and that's going to run in web, mobile, and desktop. But we also have a marketplace. So all those NFTs we just talked to you about, be able to sell them, uh, trade them, whatever, inside of our, our marketplace. And so we have the ability to create. We have things that we create, and we'll also bring them to you inside of the marketplace. Now, we also have um, marketing. And so we're going to tell you today how we chose Avalanche subnets for our game. The thing about gaming is we do lots of marketing. And you have to market to build that community before, during, uh, the lead up to launch, launch, and then post-launch. And a lot of times, you're going to do that with partners. And sometimes those partners have chosen a chain that's not yours for a variety of reasons. We saw this ourselves. There was a large retailer, a game retailer in the US, and said, yes, we'll work with you, but you have to work with this chain. And so what we had to do was deliver these things I'm going to talk to you about in just a moment, but across multiple, multiple chains. So we chose Avalanche, um, but um, some folks were using other things. We had to work with them. And we had to do different types of NFTs for marketing. So here we got our Echo Company. Um, these are, this was sort of commemorative, the first set of folks that, that started on a journey with us in the game. This next one is a, is a generative NFT um, called the Operators. Do we have any Operators holders here in the audience? See me afterwards. I brought some cool swag for you guys. Uh, we have the, uh, a really cool badge uh, that we brought for you guys because we knew uh, you might be here. Uh, we also did comic books. And so we have comic books as NFTs. And one of the things about uh, Shrapnel, it's not just people build great games. They've also won Emmys for work they've done with titles that came from HBO, so things like Westworld and things like that. So we tell stories across different types of mediums. Um, just over the past couple of weeks, we did a redeemable. This is the SCU Mint. Uh, it's basically a Shrapnel container unit where you'll keep Sigma, one of the high value pieces of items, uh, high value items inside of our game. Um, and we released that on Avalanche, Ethereum, and Polygon. And those can all be redeemed back inside of our game. Uh, participation, and then for land. So we need to have NFTs for, for all of these things. Oh, and I forgot to tell you, the game of Shrapnel, it's an extraction shooter. So when we talk about these items on this page, what you bring into a match, the stakes are really you could lose them. And so for us, we think about NFTs, especially for this audience, that means when you go into a match, we need to make sure we have some notion of almost like escrow, so you can't sell them someplace else. And then we also have to um, do settlement at the end of that match. So lots and lots of transactions we're doing, potentially up to 1.95 million transactions an hour. Um, you know, we're, we base our numbers off Escape from Tarkov, which is another game in the genre, which has 200,000 um, active users or concurrent users at one time. This is the Insignia tool. So if you've ever played the Forza, they have a tool there um, which is very similar to this. Um, this is a tool um, that allows you to create stickers and skins. You'll be able to mint from this. And so the team wants to be able to mint NFTs, allow you to create series of NFTs that you can sell inside of our marketplace and other places. The key thing with us, though, is that this is not a sticker creator for our game. This is a sticker creator for assets that can be used in our game, but they can use, be used in a lot of other places too, right? So we believe all about portability and, and the assets. You know, 
One of the things about working in a game studio, it's by people who are creators, right? And so they want to make sure creators have both opportunity and agency with what they create. Um, and so the requirements for me is, hey, Mark, we're going to put them on things in our game, but if there's other games, whether it's blackjack or snowboarding or anything in between, we want to make sure that our NFTs are actually portable and can be brought in uh, to those experiences. So that's a lot. What does it take to make it, make it real? So from a content perspective, you saw what the team wants to build. You know, they, they are going to dial it to 11. They're not going to be constrained by what's available in the marketplace today. So the first thing is coming up with content. We created you know, an NFT for call signs, which is kind of like your gamer tag, and then we have a game item NFT, which supports all of these behaviors. You know, it's bridgeable, and bundleable, composable, and consumable. Folks who've seen me talk about this before, I've referred to these as the Ibbles. Skill trees clearly don't fit that mix, but we'll go with, with all that. And then everything that we build into this has to be uh, bridgeable, right? And so we saw the other day, I'm not sure if everyone saw this, uh, Counter-Strike Go skin sold for $160,000. So there's a reality, you could get a skin in this game that you might be able to sell for an apartment uh, later on. We want to make sure you can take that everywhere you can. And I will give a shout out, I'm going to give a shout out to a couple of partners as we go through this today. Layer Zero, I think, is here today. They've been fantastic partners. Uh, and we work with us to get bridging into, into the game of Shrapnel. Commerce. All right, so now we have these things, we want to be able to sell them. So in addition to the sticker creator and the, the insignia tool and the marketplace that I talked about, we've got to look at how we're going to handle tokens, right? So we have a Shrap token that is going to be uh, what you use for utility inside of the game. Um, we also want to have fiat onboarding, right? So we have to have people be able to get Shrap tokens. And so we had lots of people tell us, well, first you need to go to USDC, and then we can convert USDC to your coin. <coughs> um, if you're targeting like a 14-year-old and say, has to go to their mom and say, hey, mom, could you do this for me? Can you open this and then go get me this much of USDC, then convert that over to this? That's not going to happen. They're going to give them $50 to go buy Call of Duty, right? And so we had to do a really streamlined experience for, for folks. So it feels like it's playing any other AAA game, and we only introduce friction points when and if you need to. Speaking of those friction points, um, know your customer in anti-money laundering. And so these are things that at certain points, uh, with assets that we're creating, we have to go through these processes. And so we spent a lot of time figuring out how do we incorporate these in a game at certain points where it's fair and reasonable for folks to go through them and it doesn't get in the way of the gameplay. Uh, and really, you know, how do you take this Web2 experience and deliver it exactly where it's at today in terms of the experience and then evolve it so no matter where you are on the spectrum from Web2 to Web3 today, um, you're going to be able to enjoy that. And that also goes to wallets. So uh, one of our partners is here today, Fireblocks. And so we have um, custodial wallets from Fireblocks that we use, which provide that seamless experience behind the scenes that looks and feels just like any other game where you've bought currency and you've had items and things like that that you've, you've bought and sold, but technically you didn't really own it because they're all tied to that, that ecosystem. So Fireblocks helps us with that, that sort of experience. But then we also know that folks have wallets that are external. They have non-custodial wallets, or it's MetaMask or any number of great wallets that are out there with Wallet Connect, and so we can connect those up together. And we use them in conjunction in the game. And so what that means is if you're an operator holder, uh, if you actually, operator holders are a great example. So operators, uh, holders are, it's public, will be getting an airdrop from us. Uh, no one else is for that today, folks, but, but an airdrop from us. Uh, and um, just the fact that you have that in a wallet that's linked in our game, we're constantly checking ownership for that and, and lighting up entitlements. If you're an SCU Mint holder and operator, we gave you early access to that insignia tool I showed you just a second ago. We need to light all this up to make sure it can work for folks. And bridging comes important again, because if you buy Shrap externally, we want to make sure you can bridge it in and also bridge it back out. OK, let's talk about the chain. People ask me, hey, Mark, why did you pick Avalanche? You've worked with a bunch of different chains. Why did you pick Avalanche? At the end of the day, it comes down to three things for me. And plus one, the team is, is fantastic. Um, but, but it's also performance, configurability, and security. So if anyone's heard about a game called Sunflower Farms, uh, that was a game where bots were on a main uh, other network that caused lots of problems. Um, we really want to have dedicated traffic, so it's great for experience for our gamers, as well as uh, making sure we're not impacting other people's traffic. The other thing is that, the, we talked about tokens a second ago, we have the ability to do our own token um, so that the cost to our game is not impacted by costs that are in a broader ecosystem. One of the things I like about Avalanche is that um, the validators are staked with AVAX, but I have the ability to use my own token, which is fantastic. One thing that's even better is configurability. And so, um, there are, we, especially when you're building something like this at the scale we're going to go build it, you want to have lots of options. The one thing I would say about Avalanche subnets, super thoughtful. I can turn certain things on, I can turn certain things on, I have total control over that over time. And the team is super uh, responsive to requests. So for me, uh, with the number of transactions that we're doing, and there's a fundamental difference between a free-to-play game and other types of things you might do in DeFi, 
is we wanted to separate out our gas token from our utility token. The reason why is that in DeFi, a lot of your actions are explicit. So I want to go and buy this NFT explicitly. I want to go ahead and do this swap, that sort of thing. But in a platform like ours, most of the transactions in free-to-play are done by the, the platform itself. So they're more implicit. The user isn't asking for those things right away. Remember I told you before about having to do escrow and settlement? Well, guess what? We're doing that behind the scenes, and what would end up happening if we didn't divorce those, it would cost us more money the more successful the game was, if, and, and, and really was not great. So we were able to do that. The, uh, the Avalanche team was fantastic there. And just on security, having you know, a dedicated network provides a number of security benefits for us. Also, when we want, you know, I joke about the great thing about configurability is the bad thing about configurability is people can make changes. And so when we want to do certain things with hardware keys and whatever with, with how we handle security, uh, Avalanche was super responsive, and we have that feature in there today. So really can't say enough great things about the, uh, the Avalanche team. Okay, storage. So this is where we talk about permanence and performance, right? And so permanence and attestability and truth and transparency, blockchain is great for that. IPFS is fine for that. But if I want performance for a game like ours, I need to put it in an off-chain store. I'm also going to augment with that with certain information that's not appropriate for the chain. Also, for the storage for, for different assets that we're going to use in the game, we're going to go pull those into to Azure or to AWS in our case to make sure that that happens. The last thing, game developers want to focus on the fun, right? And so this is my alphabet soup of Web3 slide. So they don't want to know what EICs, EVMs, ERCs, ZK, EIPs, L1s, L2, well, KYC, FIFs, AML, you know, all the stuff I just talked about, they just want to build a great game. And so we have to do all of that while obscuring that away the complexity of Web3 for them, so they can work with things like weapons and cosmetics and things like that, so they can build a great game. And I think this is super important for Web3 games to get mainstream adoption and get more Web2 Web developers building, is really just making it very easy for them to go ahead and get started. So we talked to 42 different vendors. Um, there were some good ones. I've talked about some of them today. Uh, there's a couple more um, as well. Um, there were some that just didn't do what we needed to do. A lot of people did different slices of that. Now, with my background, having built large-scale NFT platforms, you know, I could actually go build this. But it really was, as I looked at this, and we talked about it when I first joined the company, we knew this was not going to be accessible to a broader audience. Um, the good news is I work for creators, and they believe in Web3 and the potential for that, and so they want to bring that to other games as well. So if you look at our tech stack, we built out something super flexible, high speed, with APIs. When it says content, that is just, I couldn't fit things like, uh, weapons and cosmetics and other things like that there, but we'll have APIs for that. But the reality is, is that for a platform we could deliver to other people, which was always our design from the beginning, by the way, um, we are actually pretty far along, right? What we hear from folks is from the chain side, chain uh, companies like Avalanche are excited because this will help us drive more transactions to the network, bring more people into Web3. Uh, people in adjacent categories, like the data category, see us generating more data. And the goal is that we, we kept hearing from people one consistent thing. It's like, we think you can help more people be more successful more quickly. I know you're going to make your platform available later. Could you actually make it available a little bit earlier for folks? Because people are sort of struggling in different areas. Um, and we are a very responsive team of Shrapnel. So today I'm going to tell you about GameBridge. So GameBridge takes everything that we've done and is making that available to every other game that's being developed right now. With a goal to empower everyone from hobbyists AAA Studios. The nice thing is we had to dial it up to 11, and once you build a knob that goes to 11, you can turn it to anywhere in between. And so that means is that we can scale to any size. We've got advanced content scenarios. You saw some of the, the IBLs on that slide earlier. Um, the commerce capabilities um, are make it super streamlined for you to go ahead and plug this into your experiences. And then a future-proof design. Having been at Microsoft a long time, it's all about making no one-way doors. It's all about you don't know what people are going to develop the next day, so we've built in things here where it's super easy to integrate. We're already finding that with, with our partners. So this is of interesting to you. If this is interesting to you, um, starting today at Gamebridge.io, Gamebridge.io, we're enabling people to uh, pre-register to get access to the site. <laughs> We've already started talking to several games. We're having some really exciting conversations. The good news is we keep hearing we're delivering more than they need. Um, and uh, they feel like we're raising the bar. So I hope that's consistent. And we're not doing well. We'd love to hear from you as well. There's a couple of questions here to answer, and then we'll follow up with you offline. And then as we close out, I'd love to take some questions. Uh, we'll just show you a quick video.
This video will show you some of those. I talked about different types of NFTs, those IBLs. We'll just show the video here that you can see, and I'll be happy to answer questions here. And I have no plans later, so if we can't do them here, I'll continue to answer questions outside. Thank you very much. What's that? Okay, we have time for one question. Can we play the video in the background? But it's playing great. The background on this video while we're getting the question is I spent a weekend with Unity Asset Store kits that were $50 or less. And so we lit up how can we bring GameBridge to each of these? Because I build large scale systems, I'm a game developer. So I wanted something that was good for, for me just as well as my colleagues who build AAA games. So you'll see some of these as we go. All right, um, any questions? Oh, uh, just shout it out. I can't really see the lights in my eyes. Oh, I can't hear it. All right, uh, there we go. Okay. For the uh, KYC and AML kick-in, I assume that's based on the FATF's travel rule. What is that for you? Is that a thousand dollars a day? Where do you where do you push someone into that realm where they have to do KYC? So when we do KYC, we do it on the way out. So what happens is is that uh, we have a payment provider that is basically doing the fiat to SRAP conversion for us. They have a widget. If you've um, if you've gone ahead and KYC with them with you before. You don't have to do KYC again. Um, if you have, you'll do some lightweight stuff there, which is really, relatively low um, thresholds. And then when you want to take um, the assets out, you'll go through proper KYC with us based on the level. We have different levels that are available to us. And then uh, if you're using GameBridge, you'll have the ability to select your own levels based on a number of different factors. And we use a great partner there called SumSub. Okay, great. Well, I think we're out of time. Thank you very much. And I'm around if you have questions.